Hey there, fellow city builders, Kodiak to Kodiak here, and I am beyond thrilled to bring you the latest scoop on City Skylines 2. In today's developer insight, we're diving deep into the world of electricity and water to uncover the game's electrifying potential. I couldn't contain myself, so I went and discovered the most cost-effective power options for City Skylines 2, and trust me when I say, the results will be downright shocking. Before we get started, make sure to subscribe, hit that like button, and ring the notification bell to join our community of passionate city builders. And of course, I'm excited to hear your thoughts and experiences in the comments down below on City Skylines 2. Alright my fellow urban visionaries, let's light up our city and discover the electrifying potential of City Skylines 2. Okay, before we get started, uh, this is the second time I've recorded this. My microphone was having some weird issues, so hopefully there's not weird issues in this recording as well. So if you're seeing it, that means that there's not. Uh, but it's kind of a short one this week, so let's just dive right in. There's actually still a lot to uncover, though, so that's good. Electrified with electricity and water. It's a new plop. Um, one thing I noticed is that all the lights kind of trickle on and I, I pause it kind of early so that way you guys can still see it after I talk about it and I was kind of thinking like what if each light turns on based on each citizen coming home at the end of the day because as we know nighttime schedule is different than daytime schedule for citizens lives so that would be a cool mechanic I mean the cool little niche thing that they could add I, I don't know if that's the case but I'm just gonna imagine that that's the case in my head that's like in city skylines one in city skylines two the electricity and water are very critical for your city without electricity and water uh the first time i watched this i also thought oh, i was like whoa 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 there's still some light uh lit up buildings inside of this like blackout area but uh there is actually some buildings that don't have the power outage indicator over top of them so i don't know how that works um i thought this building had it over top of it but it's actually a building behind it uh and then this building doesn't have it so uh it, it does look like that is actually uh, how that works so i i thought i always thought it was like broken or bugged or something like that but in fact if your building does not have power the lights are not on so that's you see the kind of good <laughs> now the player can put the cable all right so uh as we know from city skylines uh one we can only put power lines above ground either overground or underground and now we can put them underground so that's great i think that's just like such a like small little quality of life upgrade that's going to be so beneficial for us who want our cities to be prim and proper and don't want power lines running and cutting through everything right i'm sure it's a little bit more expensive to build them underground but i think that's really nice And we also now have parallel line tool for power lines. And you guys might see why later in terms of how much power each of these cables produce that you might want to run parallel lines next to one another and then have them offshoot. Uh, so anyways, we'll keep watching. Run with our uh, so they do say some uh, little bits of stuff over here when they highlight over. Let's wait for that. Hold on. Run with our Okay, so as we move into this section of the video, let's go back and take a look at these info views on the left here because we get a little bit of information about sewer pipes and groundwater deposits. We'll go back to groundwater deposits after we do the sewer pipe. So sewage is generated by buildings using fresh water. It is drained by sewer pipes and expelled out of the water network by sewage outlets and wastewater treatment plants. So um, I don't know if this is relevant uh, or relevant for cities one, but they have to consume fresh water in order to make sewage water. So if the building doesn't need water, it will not produce sewer water, which is pretty good uh so i think that's pretty nice and then groundwater deposits are an underground water source groundwater pumping stations can extract the water from the pump and pump it into the city's water network groundwater deposits are highly susceptible to ground, ground pollution water, is water pumping station now water pumping stations are by far the most cost effective way to get water into your city based on the upkeep and water output which we looked at in this which we'll look at in this video extracting water from a lake or river and delivers it to the city via water pipes can be upgraded with an extra pump so we have an upkeep of 10,000 a month and a water output of 100,000 meters cubed a month. So it is about 10 meters cubed per dollar is, is functionally how this one works. And you can actually get even more out of it, right? So uh, I'm going frame by frame here because I want to... Oh, wow, they hold on that for a really long time because there is like a one frame where they show the water tower off. So the water tower delivers fresh water to the city via water pipes, costly to maintain when it's compared to its output capacity, but can be placed anywhere. So if you look at the upkeep here, it's 30,000 to 30,000 meters cubed a month. So this is a dollar per meter cubed. 
Uh, so, but the thing is, is that it can be upgraded with a viewing deck. So it is multi-purpose. You can turn it into a park. Uh, I think it's nice that they've added an extra use to it long term. So, like, if you place the water towers, you don't have to get rid of it because you can add um, like a little park thing to it. So, uh, I think that's pretty cool. And then we go into the where is it? The groundwater pumping station. So the groundwater pumping station has an upkeep of twenty thousand per month and a water output of seventy-five. Uh, thousand meters cubed per month. I, I didn't do the math on, on this, but let's just say it's in between. We, we know it's in between. <laughs> but it extracts water from the underground deposits and silvers to the city via water pipes can be upgraded with an extra pump and an advanced filtering system. So uh, still, those are our, our three options right there. It's uh, the the surface water is by far the most cost effective and the uh, this one is multi-purpose and this one is just kind of if you need groundwater. Ground, so, and that yeah. has to be accessed. If we look right here, we can see the groundwater reservoir usage and a bunch of other stats when they go place the it as well. Pump. Groundwater is a somewhat limited resource. If you overpump it, then it will run out. Uh, it looks like we got a little bit of an info view right there. Let's see if we can get a good look at it. Let's see, was it just the water availability one? Which one did we see? How many frames is it on for two? That's another question to be asking ourselves. Hold up. Oh. Fresh water is currently pumped and consumed to the city. The lack of fresh water affects citizens' well-being uh, and company efficiency. So that's something we've seen before. I believe that's just the water availability. So, Or they hit fresh water facilities. Not too sure. The emergency butter station. So there's a lot going on right here. So let's pause it. So first, I'm going to start with the solar power plant info view. So the solar power plant, it has photovoltaic cells generate electricity from the sun. Uh, it is stored in battery during the daytime and fed into the network during the night. As power is generated from sunlight alone, power output depends on the weather, but also the plant uh, does not produce any ground or air pollution. Can be upgraded with battery backup and advanced tracking system and high voltage substations. So here's the up, here are the upgrades. So I'm assuming the advanced tracking is just like a normal upgrade that you can do. And then one of them is like the, I can't remember the three names. There's one's a sub building and then the other one's an expansion, I think. Ooh, I don't, or I don't remember what it is, but uh, the extra batteries are you play we'll see it later they place it on the side of the building and then this one i don't know if this is like a trans i don't know what this is the high voltage substation so like that's to like convert it into high voltage power i think that these produce low voltage power but we'll see here in a second um we learn a lot about voltage um and the actual power limits of those cables as well today so um let's see as we go back I actually, we're not gonna go back because they do show off all the power plants in one go. So uh, we're just gonna the wait for those to go station, through. Support building for your electricity service. It can support your electricity grid in dire times. So right here we can see how uh, how it's charging, how much flow is going through it, and the actual amount until it is full. So. The emergency battery station is a great companion for the solar power station. They really want you to build those those emergency battery stations with these During guys. the daytime, the solar Which power station can charge up the emergency battery station, and during the nighttime. Notice how it says electricity flow right here. Um, so you can actually see how much is being transferred through these cables. This one produces 400 megawatts of power. The emergency battery station or, well, can, can transfer 400 megawatts of power. Electricity grid. And right here, we can see the electricity flow. We also get a little info view of just highlighting over a building with an info view open. So let's go back to that. See if we can catch that again. I gotta go frame by frame because it wasn't on screen very long. Right here, we got it. So emergency battery station, we can see the battery flow and the battery charge percent. And we can see the electricity flow is 100 megawatts out of the 400. So that's for the high voltage cables. Two different kinds of cables. Now remember, many of the power plants produce high voltage power. So high voltage? And they can only transfer out 400 from those cables. And low voltage. High voltage can transfer. Also, as you guys can see, you can see which direction the power is moving in the power cables in the info view, which is A nice. A lot of energy via the single cable line. Uh, the low voltage cables transfer a low amount of electricity by the cell. And you can see like nothing's drawing power from this direction. So it's just going this way and then this way, or it doesn't, it can't send it because there might be like not enough power or something like that. Uh, maybe it'll be grayed out if that's the case, but clearly nothing's drawing power this direction because it's not showing you which, where the power is going. So Oops. the low voltage cables are also built into the roads. And, yep. And as we know, the low voltage cables are built into the roads automatically. The cables have a limit to how much. And the electric flow of the low voltage cables is 40 megawatts. And as we remember before, so if you're powering a whole 
the high voltage are 400. So the low voltage are one tenth of the high voltage cable. So 10 of these, or 10, 10 of the yellow equals one of the blue. And this is a transformer right here. And one thing you might notice is that there is two cables coming off of the transformer. Now might, you might think, why, why is there two cables coming off of the transformer? All the other buildings have one. And that's because the transformer uh, can hold and transfer 80 megawatts. So uh, because these have 40, they need two to actually send it out into the grid. And one of them has to go in each direction because it can't send 40 all the way in one direction, which is why these are fully lit up. There is a full amount of power going through it. And as you can see, if there's less of the white in the power cable, then there's less power actually transferring through it because you can see how dense it is up over here. So uh, really cool, really cool to see that. This trick via the low voltage power cables, it can cause some... And we get uh, info on the electric bottleneck. There's not enough electricity to transfer. Uh, left, uh, there is not enough electricity to transfer capacity at this point of the grid to deliver all the required power. The bottlenecks. The bypass is. Um, so we actually saw some information about the power cables right here. So let's uh, let's go back for a second. I think let's hit this up. So right here we have the transformer station, uh, which tells us that the transformer only has 80, 80 megawatts capacity, which we know because there's two cables shooting off of it. So uh, it can be upgraded though. So, but uh, electricity input high voltage and output is uh, low voltage, but it actually works backwards too, according to the, I think they said that it works backwards. Uh, I'm fairly confident they did. So I know it says input and output, but I think electricity can change direction whichever way it wants to go. And I think you can up volt it too. So, so right here we have the power line, heavy cables transferring high voltage currents between power trans transformers. And we can see right here, it says 400 Plus megawatts. Bottlenecks. You can either build more cables to the area or build a high voltage. Right here we can see electricity flow 40 to 40. In the district and then transfer that into the low voltage via the transformer station. So now they're going to go through each of the power options. So uh, we'll start with the transformer station. Obviously, we've already just looked at that. Next is the wind turbine, rotating blades that combine the turbine. Uh, combined with a turbine, generate power from wind. Power outputs dependent on the placement and weather conditions, but wind turbines generate no pollution. Can be upgraded with the storage battery, solar panels, and advanced rotor design. Take note that it is low voltage. So you do not need to upscale wind turbines. We learned this in the dev diary and it can be placed on the side of the road. We do not need to place them out in the middle of a field. Um, you can place them on the side of the road. They'll automatically connect. They'll automatically be part of your power grid. If you place them out in the middle of the field, you just have to build a power line to them. You can also place them in the water, which is pretty cool, but they only produce five megawatts. This kind of one are back. So we have the small coal power plant, a basic power plant that burns coal to produce electricity. Low cost, but generates lots of pollution. Notice right here, it says low and high voltage. So I'm very curious how the connection points work. I wonder if you can, one of the upgrades, well, this one doesn't have any upgrades. So uh, I'm curious to see, like, does it send all of it via high volt or low voltage? And then you have the option to send it via high voltage if you really want, or is it uh, some of the power goes out low voltage and some of it goes out high voltage. My assumption is that you can just send it whichever way you want, but uh, you know, they, they don't explicitly tell us. So let's speculate a little bit. Back into this kind of too. All right, gas power plant, slightly uh, a power plant fueled by natural gas, larger and more efficient than coal power plants with slightly less pollution. Fairly cost effective to build and maintain, although running costs depend on the volatile market price of fossil fuels can be upgraded with additional turbine and large fuel uh, storage exhaust filter and an advanced furnace so we have 250 megawatts of low and high voltage power right here uh so that means that we can either send this out via low voltage maybe it sends that out to the local area via low voltage and then the rest of it has to go out high voltage as we know the high voltage power lines can take 200 or 400 megawatts so easily can fit in one gas power plant but the local uh low voltage lines can only take 40 so <clears throat> some of it's gonna have to go out high voltage uh right here with the emergency battery station uh the battery capacity this is all based on flow so uh, I assume that you can connect high voltage to the emergency battery stations. I think they showed that literally earlier in the video. So, um, you know, the flow will probably be based on that, but maybe it's only low voltage. I actually don't remember now that I'm thinking about it. Okay, so I'm, I went back to look and it does look like they do connect via high voltage, which is right here. So, so anyways, back to the emergency battery station. 
So huge battery banks, electricity that can be used to negate problems caused by the blackouts or energy consumption spikes can be upgraded with increased battery capacity or a diesel generator. Uh, so the battery output is 200 megawatts. So it can only transfer 200 megawatts at a time but the capacity is 500 megawatts coal power plant a power plant that burns coal to produce electricity fairly inexpensive to build maintain but generates lots of pollution can be upgraded with additional turbines enlarged coal storage uh exhaust filter and advanced furnace so this produces 500 megawatts this is more than our high voltage cables so that means that there has to be two connection points for this building in order for it to transfer all of the power it can produce out so that's something to keep in mind. It also produces low voltage as well. So um, I'm assuming you can send anything locally, uh, a direct line as well. So uh, I didn't realize how in-depth power management was until I started looking at the actual amounts uh, really in-depth while recording this. So interesting. Uh, we have the geothermal power plant. Electricity is generated from heat drawn from deep underground. So no fuel source is needed for these power plants. As a downside, they are somewhat expensive to build and maintain. Some greenhouse gases also leak into the atmosphere in the process, causing air pollution. So I didn't expect the geothermal power plants to have air pollution, but I guess they do. Can be upgraded with additional turbine, a more efficient power generation process, and a high voltage substation. Now this produces anywhere between 0 and 125 megawatts of low and high voltage so um again more low and high voltage all in one building do they just function as a transformer it says high voltage substation so like at first it probably only produces low voltage and then you have to build the upgrade in order to get the high voltage so you can get more power out maybe i'm not too sure uh down over here we have the solar power plant this is the one that we've already looked at it produces anywhere between zero and 180 megawatts of power and then the nuclear power plant the supposed end-all, be-all, best power plant in the game. A thermal power plant that uses nuclear fission as a source of heat generates vast amounts of power with no ground pollution and only minimal air pollution, but also requires lots of water for cooling. I remember them saying there was no pollution associated with this, and now I keep saying all this stuff where it says minimal air pollution. Um, it's interesting. I know it's a cooling tower, but uh, both of the buildings and upkeep costs are rather high. So we also are producing 100,000 megawatts of low and high voltage low and high voltage so very interesting uh <laughs> very interesting indeed but it's uh 250,000 a month they have it powered <clears throat> the hydroelectric power plant right here a dam that spans a river and produces electricity by harnessing the flow of water and turbines can be upgraded with advanced turbines so right here we have 120 megawatts of high voltage and uh right here we have 50 per month now because this video is kind of shorter i'm going to take a oh i hit a button on my keyboard because this video is a little shorter i'm going to take the time and i'm going to do some calculations to determine which one's the most cost effective and then i'll color code them whether or not uh they have low high voltage or just uh low voltage and uh i'm gonna put that up on the screen somewhere right now so you guys can kind of see how much they cost per month based on the upkeep versus how much power they produce so i'll put a little ratio up on screen for all of them so you guys know which ones are the most cost effective in order and what kind of output that they actually allow okay i've gone through and i've actually done all the math and i've determined basically uh which ones are the most cost effective at their maximum value so this is all factored in based at their maximum value of uh megawatts per dollar spent basically and this is only factoring in upkeep so not initial build costs this is just upkeep once you build the actual structure itself what makes sense to me is that the small coal power plant doesn't produce as much power compared to any of the others. Uh, gas and coal are almost exclusively on par with one another. Uh, coal obviously produces a lot more pollution than the gas power plant, so uh, that's how where they offset one another. Next is the geothermal, then wind, and again, geothermal and wind have have ratings, uh, ratios. So the small coal, coal, and gas are pretty much always producing at 100% capacity as long as they have the amount of coal that they're coal or gas that they actually need to function. The other side of things is that the geothermal plant, the wind plant, uh, the hydro, solar, uh, all produce at lower rates depending on how much of their resource that they actually have so for example the geothermal plant is that's its maximum amount based on whatever gases or groundwater it has access to the wind if that's actually at maximum wind capacity so if we look at this solar is objectively going to be probably the best power if you can get it at maximum all the time but you can't because there's a day night cycle so if we're just looking at 
cost most cost effective if you're using all of the power it's producing the nuclear power plant is definitely the way to go and if you don't want to worry about fluctuations in your power it does seem like gas is probably your next best bet and if you're okay with worrying about the fluctuations of power and also paying for advanced batteries which i'm not factoring into the cost of this at all solar does appear like it is beyond everything else in terms of production, even the nuclear power plant. So is solar the best? I guess that's up to you. Let me know down in the comments below. I think nuclear is going to be the one that I'm always going to be shooting for, even through the costs, just because of clearly how good it is uh, for, for your dollar amount. But if you use it all. up, And they are now even bigger and better. Just uh, we also have the additional uh, turbine for the gas power plant. Now, granted, that that chart there was based on no upgrades. That was just the base stock version of these buildings because we don't have uh, all the information on all of the upgrades. So a power plant fueled by natural gas, larger than most, uh, more efficient than coal power plants. We've already kind of read all that. Uh, it's, it's the same thing. This efficiency is 15%. The first time I recorded this, didn't realize that. So I'm glad I'm able to correct my mistake now. Uh, this is at 15% and it's only producing 37 megawatts when they add this turbine. It's says 100,000 or 100 megawatts, but it's only at 15%, so it doesn't go up that much. So, um, well, it only goes up by 15%, <laughs> 15 megawatts. So, um, auto city services, the electricity. There we go. <laughs> the and water and sewage buildings have a ton uh, of So, they're upgrades. adding the battery upgrades bank to that. And, and then these are the diesel player, generators. So, you can either improve your city productions or electricity capacity storage or sewage treatment or water and pumping and <laughs> <laughs> look at those clouds those clouds look really nice beautiful glamour shot thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one where we go all the maps and themes nice uh one thing i want to look at before we leave let's go back to the gas power plant this was actually hold on I shot a new dollar tin, uh, something I noticed in the first video. I totally just forgot to bring it up. Uh, but this is actually a uh, new dollar tin. So this is the second shot I think we've seen of Biffa City. Maybe we've seen it more throughout the video. Uh, I don't really remember. I remember seeing a lot of rectangle in this video. So, uh, And according to Biffa, a, lo a lot of them had different goals given to them by Colossal Order as well. So he said that in his like questionnaire video that um, he was told to make a city that makes money. So maybe uh, as we get into more of the economy side of the Dev Diaries, I think in two weeks, maybe three weeks, we get one on that because next week is map and theme. So make sure you guys are subscribed so you guys can get caught and up to date on that stuff. Uh, maybe we'll see more of uh, New Dollar Tin. But thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you all. I hope to see you guys in the next one on Monday. And don't forget, I have a new video coming out on Saturday for my Let's Build series. So deuces.